Hi, I'm Graham, and today I'm going to give you 12 things to love about the classic Jaguar S-Type. First we have the XK straight 6 engine. The XK straight 6 engine was already well proven before the S-Type was launched in 1963, having been fitted to the XK120, 40 and 50, as well as the Le Mans winning C-Type and D-Types in the 1950s. It also powered Jaguar's big saloon starting with the Mark 7 in 1951, and into the 60s powered the E-Type and the Mark 10. Here in the S-Type you can hear its characteristic baritone growl. This is balanced from the rear of the car by a bassy but not too intrusive exhaust note. For number two we have Jaguar's independent rear suspension. Introduced on the E-Type in 1961 and shortly deployed after on the Mark 10, this suspension system with low unsprung mass and inboard brakes really gave rise to Jaguar's reputation as having fantastic ride quality. Its road holding and ride were a significant step up from the Mark II on which it's based, and bowling along British country roads is a real pleasure. For three we have the combination of wood, leather, and wool carpet and headlining, making a really inviting place to be. Its old school charms really win you over. This car was originally fitted with black vinyl, otherwise known as Ambler, but I've had it re-trimmed in suede green leather, which really suits the exterior colour. It's a lovely place to be for both front and rear passengers. Four. Whenever I go into the garage or get into the car, the combination of wood, leather, the wool, and a few escape petrol fumes give it a really lovely old car smell. Five. Like the Mark 10 on which the rear design is based, it's got these protruding twin exhaust pipes that not only look good but sound great. In 6 we have the front door ventilator, which in addition to helping demiss the windscreen, was almost certainly used for flicking cigarette ash out back in the day. And for rear passengers, there's an opening quarter light as well, which I think is charming. A slightly controversial one for number 7. With only 169 examples of the S-Type remaining in the UK, and over a thousand Mark IIs, with its better appointed interior, superior rear suspension, bigger boot, and larger fuel capacity, the S-Type still only commands about two-thirds of the price of an equivalent Mark II. I'd say the similar looks to the Mark II at the front end, and the more tapered looks of the Mark X at the rear, leave a handsome, if not pretty, car. And I think it's best suited to darker colours as well. I might be biased though, having painted mine in its original dark British racing green. Overall though, and say it quietly, it is a better car than the Mark II. In number 8 we have the fact that you can sit 4 to 5 people in comfort plus luggage and go out for your picnic, go to the Goodwood Revival, Vista Scramble or your local car show, or even a tour of Europe if you fancy a large fuel bill. You won't turn as many heads as if you had an E-Type, but you'll certainly have a fair slice of Jaguar, space, pace and grace. In number 9 we have the lineup of 6 gauges that sit across the dash, telling your engine speed, vehicle speed, water temperature, oil pressure, fuel level and battery ampage. And like the Mark 10, these are all set in burr walnut veneer and they look great. In number 10 we have the pull-out tray underneath the dash that no doubt was used for drinking tea stored in the thermos flask underneath. This is long before the days of multiple cup holders. And above the tray is this bank of really satisfying to use switches. Another quirky thing about the S-Type that's common with the Mark 10, but not the Mark II, is you actually have two fuel tanks that have to switch between them. At number 11 we have the fact that the car's fast enough, and stops well enough, to deal with modern traffic perfectly well. This later S-Type had brakes that were common with the 420 and made by Girling, and they really aren't too dissimilar to a modern car. Of course there's no sign of any ABS, and those who aren't used to it would be surprised at how much the car pitches under heavy braking. I'll admit to overtaking much more modern traffic from time to time, and I do wonder what they're thinking as I cruise past.
and finally in number twelve we've got that great piece of automotive sculpture the leaping jaguar known as the leaper carving its way at the front of the car through the air an e-type might have a bonnet that stretches out for miles but it doesn't have a leaper gracing the front of it thank you very much for watching please do subscribe for future episodes click the like button if this is something you've enjoyed Please join me next time when I'll be going through the five year restoration process that took it from a rusty old classic in need of rescue to an example worthy of a photo shoot at the former home of Jaguar Cars founder, Sir William Lyons.